this is this recording application is going to be really well used. I'll say that much. All right, to live trace, open your image. But first, you need a new document. Of course. And of course, I'm recording and rendering at the same time as trying to use four different applications, so the machine's not going to keep up with me. I need to go to File, Place, and just browse to whatever the image is. And that image is on my desktop. The Bentley Continental Supersport. Nice car, right? If I could afford one, I would have one. What happens now? I've got a raster graphic and a vector program. I want vectors out of that raster. If you go up to the top, it would say image trace. It converts it to a tracing object. A little button at the top. It's in a different place in every application or every version of CS4 or CS5 or whatever. They call it something slightly different, but if you have an image selected, then you click that button, it's pretty handy. CS6 is different from CS5 and CS4, so if you have this at home and you're trying to suffer through it, the, min the options are the same, they're just in a slightly different menu. There's something at the top here that says, it's a little difficult to, well, difficult to see, easy to miss, dialog box. Click that. That is your imaging trace, image trace panel. It will allow you to change the tracing result from a color image to a grayscale image to whatnot. You saw that it was black and white just a second ago. What it's doing is it's looking at every single pixel that's in that image looking at the contrast between the pixels, and then it kind of makes a path for you out of that, which is awesome if you wanted to just whip something out real quick, grab, for example, a logo. If you have a raster logo and it looks like garbage when you place it in Flash, you want to make it look better, load it up in Indes or Illustrator, live trace it, clean it up, and then work with it from there. Because anything vector looks better all the time and is a smaller file size than anything raster, just by nature. And we're dealing with a web application. Um, you see it takes forever, partially because it's uh, rendering, but also because it's looking at 30 different colors and it's trying to outline each one of them. There we go. So now that I've got my tracing result, you have different views. You can you have different uh, different things like outlines you can look at. If I look at the outlines, that's what's going to be path. I don't know if you can see that up on the screen there, but that's the end result. That's because I'm looking at 30 colors. If I take that back to 19 colors, it's going to be more averaged. It's going to be a smoother object and it's going to be smoother lines. And of course, I made the mistake of clicking. So now we're going to wait. Hopefully, this is moving more, moving more quickly for all of you. Yes? What's that? Are you looking for this dialog box? The image trace? It's this little thing right up there. See that? Click that. In the dialog box, you can see how many paths there are, how many points there are, how many colors are being used, and so on and so forth. When you're working within Flash, the fewer points and the fewer paths means a f smaller file size, which means you get away with more. So having too many paths is usually a bad thing. Oh, sure. Anchors are the little points on the paths. Well, think about it this way. Each anchor needs a position location stored in memory. So if you have a whole bunch of locations, that will add to the file size one way or the other. There was something up here that said uh, 
once you have an image selected in Illustrator, um, what did it say? It said uh, fire, or live trace is what it says in CS5. It said something else in CS4. I mean, I, I'm, I'm all the way to that. I'm all, I even got the image trace dialog box open like you got right there. Okay. Oh, uh, this is under View Outlines, as opposed to the tracing result. If you go to View Tracing Result, what it'll do is it'll kind of show you an outline of that. To grab this, that little button up top is really freaking easy to miss. You've done the live trace, but you don't know how to save it or convert it to paths. Click Expand. That will do its thing, and you will see this you will see dozens and dozens and dozens of paths pulled from that one image. Which is really awesome, because then what I can do, I don't need all of this. I'm going to use one of these tools and just delete some of these. Yep. Oop, I got too much of the car there. If you didn't have the right um, options, when you're working with it, it might look a little bit different, if that makes sense. So I can't grab the bottom part of this car, primarily because it'll take part of the wheels, too, and I don't want that. But I can get rid of most of this garbage that's not this car. And for the most part, if I use, in a very similar sense, the select tools that I have in Photoshop, grab parts of this that are right over here. If I am jumping this over to flash, you select the path, copy, go to flash, paste, give it a minute, it has to think. What it does is it imports that path as an editable object into flash. Uh, you see this dialog box? There are a number of options in here. Uh, ignore paste as bitmap. That's a bad idea. It'll make it look bad. Paste using your uh, Illustrator file importer preferences is what you want to do. Usually you want to maintain layers, and usually you want to apply the recommended settings. Those recommended settings are saved in your preferences files. If I say OK, I now have a vector car that I can manipulate paint, move around. Not perfect, but you know what? It's better than what I had a second ago. Because that is a lot easier to work with than that. Yep. After I ripped the outline out of this, just copy, paste. Easy, easy as that. Uh, I used... A trace setting of, hold on, oh no, a trace setting of like 18 colors, um, and that's really it, so, up, right up here, image trace panel. 